So uh, welcome, um, Alice, um, to our short little chat interview. So we're meeting today um, just in celebration of girls and women in STEM. Um, and like I said, I'm joined by Alice, who has kindly agreed to have a, a chat with me about her experience working in STEM. So it's fantastic to be joined by you. Um, Alice is a science communicator, presenter and podcaster. Um, with a background in neuroscience. Um, she runs the Inside the Pet Petri Dish podcast, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> uh, as well as um, the Grey Matter uh, YouTube channel. Um, she has a keen interest in supporting women and girls in science, so fantastic for celebrating this day. Um, and also obviously technology, engineering and mathematics um, and has worked with the National Assembly for Wales and the European Space Agency. So we're just going to have a little chat about your experiences specifically re related to being a woman in a STEM subject. Um, and I can't wait to find out a little bit more about your career and encounters along the way. And hopefully this inspires um, others to follow the same or um, a similar career path to you. So what is your specific area of STEM, Alice? And if you were going to explain it to others, how would you explain it? So I originally studied neuroscience, um, which is the study of the brain, um, and I had a particular interest in mental health conditions um, as well as um, autism. That was sort of my research area. Um, but when I left uh, and finished my studies, um, I found that I was really interested in a career in science journalism and kind of moulding together my interest in writing, um, making videos, uh, creating content and science. So um, I sort of developed a career in science communication that initially started um, uh, when I was in university in my final year where I started a blog and I found that you could write about science as a career which was really nice and as I say it allowed me to do everything I enjoyed talk about science which I really love doing um, as well as um, doing something a bit creative and um, art and video making and photography all in one um, so yeah now I'm, I'm, I'm in science communication so I support um, uh, Cardiff University School of Biosciences um, and two of their research institutes in um, communicating the research that comes out of the um, out of the school. And I also help to run Cardiff Science Festival. I still run my blog 10 years on. And um, as Rose said, I run the Inside the Petri Dish podcast, Grey Matter YouTube channel. I also freelance write for people like Chemistry World. Um, I guest present on BBC Radio Wales quite a lot. Um, and I've written for them as well. And also present, um, occasionally present for BBC too. So um, yeah, I do lots of stuff which get allows me to share my love of science um, and talk about um, neuroscience in a really sort of simple um, and engaging way. Fabulous and I think um, all of that is fantastic in the sense of like the accessibility element of it and being able to really get people involved and like you say kind of understanding and explaining on a simple level I'm not a scientist and I've you know followed your blog and had a look at you know some of this content that's come out especially during Covid and the science related to kind of um I know you did something on hugging as well and all of just like really interesting um science elements that are just really accessible so that's fantastic um so when did you first become interested in your area of work and was there just kind of like a light bulb moment when you knew that this was exactly what you wanted to do my interest in neuroscience i suppose happened during a levels where i suppose in, in gcse you think of science as just like biology chemistry physics maths maybe um whereas it's so much more um sort of uh, detailed than that and I didn't really realise how broad it, it was and um, in my A-level biology classes we started doing neuroscience and as one of my A-levels um, I also took psychology so I was really interested in the mind, how it worked and why people behaved in a certain way and I, I suppose I lucked out in a way in that when I applied for um, university I applied to do medicine. I didn't get in, but I was offered a place to study neuroscience and it really worked out for me because um, I was like, oh, well, I really enjoy it. Um, 
in biology classes and psychology turned up for my first day of uni and thought yeah I've made the right choice because I really enjoyed um really enjoyed that subsect of science um which I probably wouldn't have thought about if I hadn't got into medicine so it was a real really happy accident really um and then um I suppose my interest in science communication came around because in my final year of university I decided to start a blog and it was specifically around women in STEM and why we see um, less girls pursuing science as a career and why we see women who have um, a career in science, unfortunately, leaving. And we see that at a higher rate than men. And that started because um, as a university student, even though as a biomedical student, I was actually uh, biomedicine, biomedical sciences and biological sciences tend to be mostly made up of women. But even though I was sitting sat in like maybe 56 percent women versus whatever men, um, a very few of my lecturers were women. Very few of the people who were um, teaching me were women. And um, I started reading into it and I would become quite interested in, in feminist theory during university. And I decided to start a blog about women in science and um, that, that writing side of things really pushed my interest in in writing about science as well um, and then through my blog after I finished university I had a, a work placement at Huare Teg which is um, a Welsh organisation that looks at um, gender equality in Wales and um, I helped them construct a, um, a, a response to a government inquiry about STEM industries and we spoke focused specifically on women in science and so at the age of I think I was 22 I was sat in front of all of these uh, AMs and uh, government people um, giving evidence to to support that application which was terrifying but um, I, I left the experience and they'd um, taken on quite a few of my recommendations and suggestions which was really rewarding that I was making an impact in Wales um, uh, in in the industry that I cared about and then um, yeah it just kind of all went from there um, it, it really got me um, invigorated and, and inspired to keep keeping that conversation going and, and making sure that more and more people were having those conversations and it, it was amazing because it, it led me to do some stuff that I never would have thought I would have done in my lifetime yeah I mean, yeah, I think about the things that you've done and the little things that I'm aware of from kind of our um, when we used to work together at, at Cardiff University. I just think the things that you were doing were were incredible um, and so young um, to be doing them at, at that point. Um, but everything you've said there kind of leads really nicely on to the, the next question. Obviously, you spoke about kind of happy accidents and, and luck and that has a lot to do with, I think, a lot of people's kind of career pathways and things. It's not always planned but things happen that we kind of pick up and run with and opportunities that we're like, right, OK, we'll go with that. Um, but have you faced or do you continue to face any barriers or resistance? Obviously, you um, you mentioned, you know, you were in a majority when studying, but could see that the the people that were teaching you were were heavily dominated by by men rather than women. Um, have you faced any specific barriers when kind of being in this field? Well, yes, yeah, I say, even though we're a majority in, in biomedical sciences, we do see a, a huge drop off then as soon as gradu uh, graduation happens. So um, I myself didn't go on to do a PhD and didn't go on to a fur further education in science. Um, so I'm one of those people that, that did drop off, even though I'm still in the industry. It's very loose, really. I'm not in academia, academia and I'm not researching. Um, so I think even though we, we see, as, as I say, I was part of um, a subsect of science that is majority female, that is only up to a certain point. And then we do see these drop offs. And as you go further through, through your career, you see fewer and fewer women. And I think that's a really important thing to acknowledge because you could look at university statistics and think we've we've succeeded, we've done it, but that's not the end of it. It's an entire pipeline that needs fixing. And um, I think for me, one of the one of the main barriers other than being a woman is being from a working class background. Um, I really struggled in university um, uh, financially um, and it was the first time I'd ever met anyone who'd gone to private school. 
and I was living with 12 people who'd gone to private school. It was a completely different world to me. And um, unfortunately, academia and science is something that's still um, predominantly um, for people who are of not working class. And um, one of the reasons I couldn't go on to study um, further education, do a master's or a PhD, was I needed to start earning money. Um, it wasn't an option for me to to take out more loans. And um, I think, uh, and so I, I had to make a decision to not go and do a master's or a PhD, um, which um, uh, financial um, situations tend to fe uh, affect women more than men. So it's definitely a, um, a kind of a, a Venn diagram of the things um, that, uh, can affect um, women in their careers uh, and I, I'm obviously very privileged um, from a lot of aspects as, as a white person, um, as, a, as a straight person, as an able-bodied person, um, I have to acknowledge that privilege as well um, but I, I certainly struggled from a financial perspective from the bi background that um, I came from as well as um, being a woman in a, in a male-dominated industry. Great, thank you for that and your honesty on kind of the struggles. And I think it's important, isn't it, to recognise that it's not it's not just being um, not just being a woman or not just being one thing that impacts. It's that intersectionality, like you say, that kind of Venn diagram of kind of our identities and our and our lives that that um, kind of change the course of what we do, how we do it, how we how we access um, things. So that's a really a really important point that you've you've made there. Um, thank you for that. Um, so the next question, I think you've probably touched on it, um, but what inspired you, if there's like one thing that inspired you to follow this particular passion, or you've probably you've probably touched on it, but kind of what motivates you to kind of continue? I think for me, it was um, seeing that something was wrong in an industry that I loved and wanting it to change. Um, I think that... Um, we know that from businesses that the more diverse the business the better the business does and we know that that's true for scientific research as well um so we can only benefit from making science more diverse um in all aspects of diversity and um i wanted to be part of that um i wanted to be part of that conversation um I, i'm a bit of a loud mouth so when i have an opinion i can't really keep it to myself either um so um, and, and it's funny because I've traditionally been quite a shy person. I was always that kid in school that never put their hand up in class and um, I was pretty invisible. So it was quite out of character, really, for me to want to um, put my head over the parapet and shout about something. Um, but it was because I was so passionate about it and I felt so strongly about improving the workplace for other people. Um, that that really drove me. So I think my red-headed stubbornness did come in handy there. <laughs> oh, fantastic. It is that, isn't it? Sometimes sticking your head above the parapet and just recognising what your passion is, you know, if that is science and improving science in the workplace and then being able to combine those into something really accessible and something really fun that you enjoy, you're able, you've been able to maybe not follow that kind of traditional career and also speaking about kind of the drop off of of women in STEM in terms of academia but you've kind of created um, a career for yourself um, both in a traditional sense of kind of being employed by Cardiff University but then all of kind of your add-ons and all of those things that have you've kind of got exposure to as a result of just like you like you said your red-headed stubbornness and just going for it and doing it which is fantastic I've used your words not mine I'm not saying you are red-headed and stubborn <laughs> um, and then um the next question so again we know that you've done some fantastic things and had uh, the opportunity to be involved in some things that we can only dream of um but um is there kind of like one thing that you've had the opportunity to be involved in that really stands out for you? I think it's it's hard to say one because um, I, I enjoy every opportunity I get now. Um, but I think everything is a chance for me to um, um, relish and um, enjoy. And as I say, it's not something I would have en envisioned myself being in as a teenager, thinking of my career. Um, 
I, I wouldn't have visioned myself wanting to stand in front of a camera or um, or even talk to large groups of people. Um, I think the National Assembly for Wales was fantastic. It was terrifying. I remember being able to hear my pulse in my ears because I was so scared of talking to all of these people. But it was really rewarding coming away and hearing that they'd taken on a lot of my recommendations. Um, but then also the European Space Agency, when they invited me out to talk to them, that was a complete surprise. And I went to Paris, which I'd never, I, I think it was the second time I'd ever left the country. And it was um, an experience I'll never forget, getting to rub shoulders with people who'd worked on the Mars rover and things like that. And I just felt like, a, why am I here? But also at the same time, knowing why I was. Um, and um, yeah, I suppose um, I've, I've recently started um, doing the occasional presenting job for BBC and filmed my first piece for BBC Wales Live, um, which isn't something I'd ever thought I'd do. And getting to talk about the impacts of the pandemic and misinformation and why science communication is a really important aspect of science. That was really amazing. Um, and I, can, I hope to continue doing that because um, I think we need more women um, on television talking about science as experts um, because we need the public to see us as um, experts as well. Um, and I, I also hope that through my podcast and things that I've created for myself, where I regularly bring on female experts, um, that I can help um, create a platform to do that myself too. That's fantastic. Some really uh, amazing things that you've been part of. Um, I remember when you were a speaker on the BBC News on the on the famous red sofa and thinking, I know her like I actually know her properly. <laughs> it wasn't just something you're like, I've, I've met that person and I can vaguely say I know them. Uh, that's uh, it's exciting. Um, it always felt a bit weird because we were in the same office and I, I'd come in the next day and I'd felt like I'd like done like a, a side gig or something and I'd come on and come back in and put another hat on or something and I'm like oh that was me and now this is also me <laughs> here I am back back to me in the office oh no so that's so that's fantastic and and so, some amazing opportunities like you say going to Paris and rubbing shoulders with you know people that you'll have held in really high esteem but you're also you're there as well kind of being held in really high esteem and it's nice to kind of hear you be so humble about kind of that opportunity and recognizing that you you did actually deserve to be there because you've done you you've done a lot of work to make sure that you were there and you had a seat at that table um brilliant um and then just to round us off um if you had an inspiring message um that you'd give to others about um working in stem subjects what what would that be i think that um one of the reasons i love science so much from studying at school to university to, to now um, is that science is exactly what you make of it set so, or stem subjects are exactly what you make of it because you get to pursue something that you're interested in um, like to the nth degree with such great specificity which you don't necessarily get in a lot of careers and you get to truly make a difference in the area that you're interested in and I think that that's a fantastic aspect of a potential career um, that uh, even for myself I've as you said earlier I've crafted this little space for myself that's really niche um, that I still am able to be in the industry and do all of the creative things that I love and enjoy and help to um, create impact in my own little way and I think that STEM industries are so fantastic for that um, that you can be part of the future um, as well as focusing on something that you really, really enjoy. Fantastic, thank you. And that's that's all of my questions. Um, I found it really interesting, um, even kind of knowing little bits about kind of your career and, and life um, pre having this chat. But I think um, hopefully people watching this will have found it really insightful um, to hear about kind of the choices that you've made, um, your experiences, your challenges, um, your reasons for kind of pursuing your career and your kind of little niche, like you said, like your little niche kind of aspect that you've been able to kind of home in and create for yourself and those successes along the way. 
away. So um, best of luck from me with all of those um, future endeavours. Um, and if people want to kind of follow your work or, um, you know, these these avenues that you're that you're working on, how do they how do they do that, Alice? Um, so you can have a read of my blog, which is Mindful of Science, um, or I'm very active on Twitter, <laughs> um, and that's um, Alice Jane Gray. So um, and I'm always happy to chat and talk to people about their careers. And as I say, I run inside the Petri Dish podcast, always looking for guests. So if someone's got an interesting piece of science research that they're working on, please get in touch. I'd love to, to feature you. So, yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Alice. Thank you.